Ah, yes. The one with the Terminator reference. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 5, Episode 13, The Song Remains the Same. This is essentially a part two to the end, or in the end, from Season 4. Sam and Dean both travel back in time to the 70s to meet their father and mother to try and prevent Anna, uh, the red-headed angel that Dean had a little bit of thing for, who they helped, helped out back in Season 4, from killing their parents, essentially going full Terminator on them. Now, getting one kind of glaring issue out of the way it is unfortunate that anna is just written out of the show so unceremoniously like sure she has a pretty cool little arc here but i do find it odd that she has had almost no build-up ever since she was taken by the angels which was at the end of near the end of season four she comes back for one episode and it immediately is written out as a villain probably the major reason that this episode doesn't get a seven because Anna's motivations while makes sense to her character in terms of the reality of it all she takes one giant leap into the deep end she doesn't even get her feet wet at all she just jumps right into the deep end and the fact that there isn't any build-up whatsoever to it is a major letdown funny enough though that i don't really see where on earth they could put it because we spend so little time in the present so much of this episode is in the past and it does have a series of very hard-hitting conversations for the brothers the first being sam and john John going on about how on earth a father or a parent could do what has happened to Dean and Sam. How could a father raise their children in such an environment? And Sam is actually defending the actions of his father to his father. The level of deep in this conversation is kind of profound. Sam understands, and Sam is like what John is right now. John, he was like this. He had issues with his father, but then he also gets to reflect on the fact that he never got to really forgive his father, make amends with his father, so this is his chance to get that, to get that closure for himself. Even though it's not even truly real, it is still an attempt it's still something for sam because he has so much guilt still on his shoulders for the whole event that put them into the situation that they're in with their father dying because he gave his life to save dean and everything going all the way back to devil's trap back at the end of, of the first season there's that much baggage that is on sam on top of everything else that has happened to them over the last four years so to have that conversation is very fulfilling for sam as we see he gets a little bit more of a clarity especially when it comes to the conversation with their mother which starts off with dean revealing that he is in fact her son he reveals elements about her that only she would know, um, and she just kind of gets the full blast of what's going to happen to her, what's going to happen to the family, without the whole bringing about the apocalypse bit. The conversation is very hard-hitting for the mom, and I have to give credit to the actress here. She does a very good job delivering uh, all of this hard-hitting dialogue with... Uh, Sam and Dean. The guy who plays their father, uh, he's there. He's getting there. They do kind of place a few lines of pieces of dialogue that John Winchester is known for throughout his uh, his presence in this episode, and I do enjoy it. And while I did go on that tangent about how Anna is kind of an underdeveloped or not properly produced villain in this episode, she does have a pretty commanding presence. There are some very cool fight scenes, the first one being in the garage shop, which has a bunch of really cool stunts in it, and then again at the house where they kind of just bring in Uriel, which I thought was kind of cool. I thought that was a little bit of a cool little tidbit back to the past, back to season four, because as we all know, Uriel's a dick. So I thought that was really cool to see him in this. And then there is one more conversation, one more very, very big conversation that happens in this episode, and that is between Michael and Dean. When it looks like Anna's going to win, she's pretty much killed Sam. Uh, the father's been blasted out the window. Dean can't do anything. Michael takes over John Winchester and completely eviscerates Anna. Full on burns her very being to ashes. Again, that's a bit of an unfortunate bit because I really was hoping that Anna did have a lot more to this season. I thought that while I understood her radical idea here, I just 
I wish that they had done more, considering I like this character so much in the fourth season. But again, it's the conversation that happens after that is very key. We are again getting more build up towards this supposed destiny that is for the brothers. The idea of Michael and Lucifer fighting it out between the two of them and this battle that is destined by God and destined by life itself. I very much like the actor who plays John once he's been taken over by Michael. He was okay as John Winchester, but with this Michael presence in him, he's a lot more intimidating, a lot more powerful with his presence, and just how he delivers the dialogue back and forth with Dean is very, very good, and it kind of gives you more of that assumption that these things are meant to happen and things are going to happen no matter what they choose. But at the end of the episode we still get Dean saying this is Team Free Will. This is the beginning of Team Free Will essentially. It was uh, the two of them having a glass of bourbon it looks like while Castiel is completely spent and knocked down on the couch because of all the time travel business. Which, little note back to the beginning of the episode when they travel back in time, did you guys recognize that building that they pass in front of? It's the exact same building that they used in Fort Langley for Croatoan. I know that they use this for others, but I always think of Croatoan. The building that they're hiding out in, or that makes it look like they're hiding out in, um, that is the same building that is in this episode. So if you guys noticed that, good for you. If you guys haven't picked this up before, it was one of the major reasons why my dad and I watched this show is because basically we're like, Oh, we know where that is. Oh, we know where that is. Oh. I know where that is. Aside from the Anna bit, it's the only negative I have with this episode. It's a fantastic time travel episode. It's a great return to seeing both young uh, John and uh, Mary Winchester, getting another taste of that. Some really cool development for the brothers, kind of, especially for Sam having some form of reconciliation with his father, which we would get again all the way in season 14. It's still a very fun, episode to watch and it's a really great build-up episode so in the end i'm going to give the song remains the same a six out of seven it's a very very fulfilling episode it's got great elements to it and it's building up the whole main narrative in a way that is very very necessary especially after the kind of episode that was swap Mead. but i asked you guys for your comments about this episode so let's read this off now it's a pretty great terminator style episode i really like the sam and young john conversation with john describing sam's father as a responsible bastard and sam defending him and finally get to tell his father that he understands why he was brought up like that and that he forgives in my opinion a far superior scene between sam and john than the one that in season 14 episode 13 exactly even without having jeffrey d morgan play john again my favorite scene for this episode is definitely the mary dean and sam scene i found it very touching that the boys are okay with the idea of never being born if it means saving their parents and stopping the apocalypse the only thing and it's a really small thing that kind of bugged me was how anna escaped heaven and got it to the past in the first place Castiel made the point that it is impossible to escape the prison in heaven. Anna not only was only able to escape heaven's prison because the angels allowed her to do it, but why? Surely Michael and the other angels would have wanted to stop Anna from going back in time and attempting to kill Mary and John, unless Michael already knew that Anna would fail because his past self, wonderfully played by Matt Cohen, is the one that kills her. Man, time travel is confusing. Overall, I give this episode a 6 out of 7. Well, there you go. And funny enough, actually, that part about uh, Anna getting out of prison, yeah, uh, I actually didn't think about that either, but that is also a good kind of criticism for the episode. The song that remains the same title fits perfectly with the melancholy tone of this episode. One thing I noticed about this episode, and maybe it's just me, but I really love the original soundtrack. Oh, it's interesting to see how hellbent Anna is on killing Sam, but not wanting to kill Dean. The heart-to-heart -heart moments with Sam and Dean and their parents rips my heart out every time. The bittersweet feeling of how Sam is pouring his heart out how he never got to say goodbye to his father and forgives him for their past to experiences to a younger John is brilliant. Dean also talking to Mary about being her son was beautifully captured. The action scenes and the special effects made my jaw drop every time, especially with Anna's death by Michael. Seeing Michael after 12 episodes later was refreshing. You can really get a sense of the duty of him following God and a righteous sense of why he is doing what he's doing to kill Lucifer. It's especially heart-wrenching when you can see how he relates to Dean loving Sam as he loves Lucifer. But I think what really breaks my heart and comes full circle for the show is how involved the angels have been throughout the Winchester's lives. The illusion of free will and how the angels have been operating 
people's lives to enforce predestination makes calculative and depressing sense really uh, Mary's line at the very end angels are watching over you still shatters my heart every time yes especially with the double-edged kind of meaning to that saying and how Dean goes from loving that to absolutely despising the very meaning of what's behind it the song remains the same was a really good episode I really liked that we finally got to see Michael a good tie-up uh, for Anna's story arc very good episode I really like the, I like that Sam and Dean were okay with never being born if it meant they could save the world, but it was already too late. Song remains the same. One of my favorite of this or any season. I find John and Mary so brave and endearing, as are Sam and Dean's willingness to sacrifice their very own existence. The portrayal of Michael was heartbreaking, or was breathtaking. His calmly reasoned assurance that all was meant to be absolute in opposition to Dean's unsettled and angry insistence that it was not. I love Sam's heartfelt forgiveness and understanding with John, his father-to-be. John was clearly touched by Sam, even though he had no idea that was his son-to-be. Mary's heartbroken reaction to thinking she's raised her sons to be hunters defies the insulting retcon of her character in season 12. Yep, 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 yep. This was one of those episodes that reminds me that Supernatural could achieve greatness, particularly when focusing on the heart. Very well said, Shannon. Yes, there's a lot of emotional weight in this episode. It's not sappy. I love heart, but heart is a very sappy episode. This is a very well-written, emotionally gripping episode. Now this is a return to form after the previous filler episode. It's really nice to see John and Mary in the past again, proving by their interactions that they are truly meant for each other. I also love how Sam finally gets to see his mom and having a chance to tell his dad how much he meant to him. Such a good display of raw emotion, something that Jared would completely phone in from season 12 onwards. Honestly, both of them kind of would. I could go on ranting about Anna and how her actions make no sense, but it would be like being a dead horse by this point, so I'll just say I never liked that character. They wasted Julia McNeven, and I'm glad that she was incinerated in one of the most badass Archangel moments. All in all, this was a great emotional episode, and that's what Supernatural does best. I'll admit, like the the killing of Anna still blows me away. I like the I like the character, and I, but I didn't like what they were doing with her in this episode. But I think that still adds the emotional weight of her death in this episode and makes it so profound. The dialogue in this episode, as well as the acting, really keep you engaged. Glad to see Sam along for the ride this time. The writers did a good job here by giving each Winchester an opportunity to develop without eating up too much time, and even the development. Cass has made as a character is evident despite only brief appearances. The scene where Sam and his father are so emotionally cathartic. I know I'm in the minority here, but I still prefer the scene. Ooh, the 300th episode. I wasn't bothered by Jared's acting or dialogue. However, this episode is superior as a whole. Yeah, I guess personal preference. Also, Jeffrey D. Morgan does have a presence, but yeah, the, the writing and just the whole dynamic of the characters past and their futures makes it's way better done in this episode than it was in the 300th episode michael this is one of the only two appearances in season five but it defies him as a character and makes me wish we had gotten another episode with him this year i uh, yeah, can't dis i can't disagree with you on that one it would have been interesting but at the same time it helps build that mystery and that about the character itself towards swan song Disappointed that Anna is a bad girl now and only in one episode, but I don't feel it's a retcon. The world is at stake and the game has changed this year, and ultimately Sam will have to be sacrificed. Yeah, actually no, that's it's definitely not a retcon. You can see where the idea of it came from, it's just it's so sodden that there should have been a little bit more development to it. I only have two nitpicks. I'm glad Mary doesn't miss Carrie after getting slammed into a car windshield hard enough to that with flirty thoroughly cracked it it's just realistic to me but not really important yeah you're not wrong there and then the bit about the horsemen going back to their day jobs if sam is killed why would sam's death immediately stop the apocalypse yes it's necessary to fight michael but we see later on that even without him the devil and the and pestilence still send out the croton virus so the devil would still win, could still win, or at least continue doing horrific massive damage without Sam, right? The devil can't be killed. He is eternal and can uh, find other, still find other vessels. But the, for, again, for the sake of driving this episode's plot, the, the plot hole is worth it. I'd say 7 out of 7. Now, I'll admit, like, every time we talk about the end, I do believe that was an illusion by Zachariah. Like, he had an idea. He kind of had a pre notion of what could possibly be, but he's obviously twisting the story to 
further kind of help his point. So the end is a possibility. It's never the exact actual realization of what the future would be. So I always kind of view that episode like that, ergo how I'm able to kind of just figure that if they try and kill Sam, they're going to try and bring him back because they want destiny to happen. This episode is amazing. Really cool to see young Uriel. Yeah, except I don't completely buy Anna's heel turn <laughs> to time-traveling murder machine. She was always the voice of reason and compassion in the earlier seasons. I wish they could have shown more of her struggle as an angel on, on the run and how it made her desperate instead of her coming back and saying, whoops, I guess I'm a Terminator now. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, but it's it's too much of a change for the character but oh well it's it's not a bad turn but it could have been better song remains the same as a great episode it was good seeing young versions of john and mary in this episode and i'm glad that sam was able to meet his mom for the first time and also she was able to make peace with john because in season two he didn't get a chance um, matt cohen did a great job as michael in this episode and i much prefer this version of mary or to mary winchester through seasons 12 to 14 Watching this episode reminds me of how much Dad really messed up her character. The only problem I have with this episode is Hannah. This has like been a repeat thing, it seems. And it's totally founded. I really hate that the fact that, that once again another female character gets ruined all because the female fans hated her and the growing popularity of Cassiel. Anna was originally brought back to take over as guide for Sam and Dean, but the fans instantly loved Castiel, so he, he was kept on and Anna was killed off in this episode. Kirky did the exact same thing that Dab did with Chuck. He totally changed Anna into a villain, just, it just didn't work. I knew it wasn't right and I'm still angry about that after all these years. Anna's had so much potential as a character only to be wasted. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I think the fact that it is a character that you liked and you kind of understand where she's coming from and the fact that she doesn't want to kill Dean, it helps bolster what they're trying to push over. But yeah, it's, it is a turn that is very hard to accept. Song remains the same. Can an episode be too good? There are too, so many good things to say about this episode. This episode is one of the big myth arc episodes. This episode was amazing. I remember exactly how I felt the first time I watched this nine years ago. Oh, cool. Same boat here. It had me engaged from the beginning to end. I was horrified at Anna's plans, A and B, wondering, uh, and B, wondering what, uh, when she had turned evil and why. She had once made love to Daniel. How could she kill his brother? I was overwhelmed by how willing Sam and Dean were to urge Mary to leave John before they were even conceived and took a thumbs up from some higher power that she was already pregnant. Their lives aren't much, I guess, but to be willing to not be born, that sacrifice. I loved them for that, but really didn't want them to go there and was glad when Mary told them it was too late. Once again, Dean had to suffer listening to things he didn't want to hear from his father's meat suit. Remember when the yellow-eyed demon did the same thing to him? This was really any was this really any better? So he has to endure being an angel's meat suit, fighting and killing his brother. That's his destiny, and there's no way out of it. Period. God said so, but where is God? So Dean can check with him. Is this really what the archangel's fathers want? Uh, I like that I could see the misery and the sense of doom on Dean's face when Michael said that he was going to scrub his parents' minds clean of both Dean and Michael, killing Dean's hope to prevent Mary from dying in Sam's nursery in 1983. The song remains the same, and Dean can't change the lyrics no matter what he does. Is that going to be true for him and Sam as well? Are they cursed to play out Michael and Lucifer's song, whether they want to or not? Of course, modern me no already knows the answer to those questions, but I asked him, but... I asked, but me in the past didn't. This episode can take a 7 out of 7 rating and run with it. You did a good job there, Cookie. You built up the uh, the finale of this uh, the season uh, before I even review it. The song remains the same. Me think good. Well, me agree. I, I, this is a pretty good comment here. I, I think this is pretty decent and totally not because this person could be my wife. Uh, thank you, love. I mean, JG. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys for your comments and now we're talking about one of my favorite episodes of this season i have a lot of very interesting thoughts about this episode my bloody valentine is one of my favorite from this season and i will explain a lot about why but first give me guys' comments about that episode and i'll read those off in the next review otherwise guys i hope you enjoyed if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe and i'll see you guys next week Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support.
To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.